Have you ever stood in front of a big lump of land and wondered, wait, is this a hill or a mountain? It's a surprisingly common question. Most of us think we know the difference. Mountains are tall, steep, and rugged, while hills are smaller and gentler. But when you actually try to pin down the definition, things get a little blurry. Different countries, different languages, and even different communities all draw the line in different places. So today, let's dig into this curious question. What really separates a hill from a mountain? Right here on History of Simple Things. When we use the word mountain, we usually picture something dramatic. Think of the snow-capped Alps, the jagged Rockies, or Mount Fuji's perfectly shaped cone. They're towering, steep, and hard to climb. A hill, on the other hand, feels less intimidating. It's rounder, lower, and often something you might stroll up on a weekend hike. At first glance, the difference feels obvious. Mountains are big, hills are small, but nature isn't always so tidy. There are plenty of mountains that are relatively short and plenty of hills that are taller than you might expect. So where exactly is the cutoff? One of the most interesting things about this debate is that there isn't a single universal definition. For example, in the United Kingdom, people used to classify anything above 600 meters as a mountain, while anything lower was considered a hill. But this wasn't always consistent. Some areas simply used tradition to decide the name. In the United States, the U.S. Board on Geographic Names once tried to settle the issue by saying that a mountain had to be at least 300 meters taller than its surrounding terrain. But even they eventually abandoned that rule because it didn't really capture the way people use the terms in everyday life. So the truth is, no international authority has ever agreed on a strict measurement. In fact, in 1970, the U.S. officially dropped its own attempt to distinguish them by height. Since then, it's mostly been left to local usage, culture, and geography. Even though there's no universal standard, one of the most common ways to separate hills from mountains is by relative height. Generally, a mountain is considered much taller compared to the land around it. A rise of a few hundred meters might be called a hill if the surrounding area is flat, but in a landscape where everything is already at high elevation, even taller peaks might just be seen as hills. This is why in parts of Scotland, hills can be higher than some mountains in other countries. It all depends on perspective and local tradition. Take, for example, the Black Hills in South Dakota. They're called hills, but some of them rise well over 2,000 meters above sea level. That's taller than many mountains elsewhere. Clearly, the names aren't just about raw numbers. Height isn't the only factor. Steepness and shape also play a role in how we perceive these landforms. A mountain tends to have steeper slopes and more rugged features. They might have sharp peaks, cliffs, or rocky outcrops. Hills, on the other hand, are often described as rounded or gently sloping. You can picture rolling green hills in the countryside versus jagged mountain ridges cutting into the sky. This difference in form often influences how people label them, even if the actual elevation doesn't fit neatly into a category. What makes this even more fascinating is how language and culture shape the way we talk about hills and mountains. In some places, what's called a mountain might be referred to as a hill in another region. For example, England has the famous Malvern Hills, which reach over 400 meters. Meanwhile, Japan calls Mount Tsukuba, which is just 877 meters high, a mountain. Tradition and cultural significance often matter more than numbers. Names also carry history. 
Sometimes a landform was given a name centuries ago, and even if its classification doesn't match modern definitions, the name sticks. That's why we have plenty of mountains that aren't particularly tall and hills that would easily qualify as mountains elsewhere. There's also a psychological aspect. Human perception of size can be influenced by what we're used to. For someone who grew up near the Himalayas, a 900-meter rise might look like nothing more than a hill. But to someone from a flat coastal plain, that same height could feel monumental. In other words, hills and mountains aren't just physical objects. They're also shaped by how we experience them. A small rise in the landscape might still feel like a mountain if it dominates the local view and stands out dramatically. From a geological perspective, both hills and mountains form in much the same way. They can be created by tectonic activity, volcanic eruptions, or erosion shaping the landscape over time. The difference, again, is more about human labeling than natural categories. Geologists don't need to separate hills and mountains strictly. They're more interested in how the landform formed and what it's made of. So scientifically speaking, the hill-mountain divide is more cultural than geological. To see how messy it gets, let's look at some examples. Mount Witchproof in Australia holds the record as the world's smallest registered mountain. It rises just 43 meters above the surrounding plain. By any measure, it's basically a hill. But the locals proudly call it a mountain, and the name has stuck. On the other hand, the Cotswold Hills in England reach heights greater than Mount Witchproof, but are still called hills. These kinds of examples remind us that the distinction isn't carved into stone. It's flexible, and often a matter of local identity. After all this, where does that leave us? If we want a simple rule, the best we can say is that mountains are generally higher, steeper, and more rugged than hills. But the exact cutoff changes depending on where you are and who you ask. Sometimes it's about elevation, sometimes it's about shape, and sometimes it's just about tradition. In the end, the line between a hill and a mountain is fuzzy. It's one of those cases where language doesn't perfectly match the natural world. So the next time you're out on a hike and someone asks, is this a hill or a mountain? You'll know the honest answer. It depends. It depends on local culture, on perception, on how steep it feels, and sometimes just on the name it was given long ago. The world's landscapes don't always fit neatly into categories. And that's part of what makes them fascinating. Whether you're climbing a towering peak or walking over rolling hills, each landform carries its own story. And in the end, the label doesn't matter nearly as much as the experience of standing there and taking it all in. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.